Well, good morning, everybody. Um, it's so encouraging to hear the words of uh, Director Weldon, Administrator Shaw, and Representative Lowy. Um, these are people, obviously, with broad experience and an ability to make things happen. We need more than ever people like them in order to move forward the global agenda on literacy. And I must say, um, they're also hard acts to follow. Um, and some of the, the, the ideas I'll be talking about have already been broached by the previous speakers. But I think I'll be able to add a few new directions, and that's what I'll be getting to. Um, let's start by considering what exactly is our global literacy agenda. Is it to reduce illiteracy by a certain percentage? Is it about increased awareness concerning literacy problems? Should we concentrate more on fundraising or spend more time garnering political will? These questions and underlying issues they reflect are likely to be familiar to all of us in the room today. There is no doubt that the precursor issues of political will and greater funding are of critical importance in nearly every sector fighting for social and economic justice, literacy included. And I believe we have come farther down the road toward, a global, toward global literacy than is commonly thought. We have made serious and sustainable progress to date, even if this remains poorly understood by the public, and even if there is still much to do. Where are we now, and how far do we need to go? As we heard already, there are roughly 800 million adults that the UN says are uh, illiterate today, cannot read a short paragraph in any language. And it's a number that has not uh, changed much over uh, several decades. And two-thirds of these are women. Further, as we already heard, 67 million, the UN says, uh, 67 million children do not receive any schooling today of school age. Uh, untold millions more children receive, no, uh, receive schooling so poor that even after several grades, they cannot read a single word. And as distressing as these statistics are, they present only part of the picture. Looking more broadly from where we, the global community, have come, it's safe to say that significant gains have been made in recent decades. Many of the world's poorest countries have dramatically increased the percentage of children now in school. Educational advances are especially true for girls, whose rate of participation in many countries is nearly equal to boys, having doubled or tripled in recent years. The number of schools has also greatly increased, and internet connections have begun to sprout up in remote locations, giving a sense of future possibility to many who have felt previously cut off from the world at large. Yet, one of our biggest challenges today is that while we put millions of children into schools, we have not adequately provided them with quality learning experiences, which must include learning to read. And of course, the previous two speakers also emphasized that point. Um, one example, let's just take Uganda, where now 90% of the children are enrolled in primary school. And even though Uganda has received a considerable amount of donor support and have developed strong strategic plans, it's still the case that more than half these the Ugandan children will drop out before they can leave complete primary school. This is just one example of the necessity of improving the quality of learning for children. And there are many poignant stories of poor children who live in poor countries, showing that even if they have attended school, many, and sometimes the large majority, cannot read a word in any language and have learned little of the curriculum provided to them. In these poor schools, there are often too many kids, say 60 to 70 kids in a single classroom, too few books, poor sanitation, and unskilled or absent teachers. Many of us have heard such stories. Many of us in this room have seen them directly or in photographs or have visited similar schools where these situations are endemic today. But unlike a decade or two ago, such classrooms should not lead us to think that the world is faced with hopeless situations that defy good solutions. Up until fairly recently, the literacy field, which I've been a part of now for more than three decades, especially when concerned with resource-limited countries, has accepted the first benchmark of education for all, namely getting kids into school. Fortunately, today we know, and as the previous two, two speakers said as well, that access is not enough. And I think substantial research in literacy has led to a new phase of development, where empirical science and innovation is beginning to impact policies 
to improve the lives of children and adults now, today. Contributions have come from higher education, think tanks, donor agencies, foundations, governments, NGOs, people such as you in this audience today, and from the fields of anthropology, linguistics, psychometrics, medicine, digital technology, and more, and from across the world. What this means is that we have come farther down the road toward universal literacy. So now is the time to try to imagine a literacy system, not just an educational system, that supports reading as part of the fabric of everyday life. Let's imagine for a moment what this future would look like within the next five to ten years. At the micro level, there would be inexpensive assessment tools available to identify each child's reading development or reading progress with information provided back to teachers and parents alike so that everyone knows if learning is actually happening and in which domains. And we would have teachers who were trained in how to teach reading effectively. At the macro level, local and national authorities would have monitoring tools that would reveal inequities within classrooms, across schools, and across regions. Identification of disparities is crucial for addressing the needs of the most marginalized groups. Just as importantly, these data would be posted on the web so that communities and parents could better understand the learning outcomes of their children. And as some of you well know, this is already happening in parts of India today. Programmatic interventions would include widely available literacy classes for unschooled mothers because we now know that adult literacy has a significant impact on both learning and health outcomes of children and creates economic opportunities for the entire family. We'd have mother tongue instruction for all, with appropriate research-based transitions to second language literacy. Also, there would be interventions at individual, community, and national levels that gather data needed for programmatic adaptation to local circumstances and local needs. There would be a reduction in data gathering for the sake of regulatory compliance. Rather, with the rapidly growing use of handheld devices, we would provide real-time data on children's progress, school monitoring, and on the impact of design interventions. Again, some of these tools are already available today. It is not only in the field of healthcare that expediency matters to save lives. In educational terms, failure to act quickly can do real and lasting harm to, children, uh, to children's social and economic futures as well. Finally, Let's imagine literacy from the perspective of social justice. National governments would be less likely to see socially and ethnically diverse groups as educational problems, but rather as opportunities to create equitable, pluralistic societies. Through the involvement of multiple stakeholders, educational authorities could be held more accountable to their own policies of inclusion. Children who happen to be born in a remote corner of Ecuador or in inner city Bombay would not be relegated to a life where they are at risk of being an illiterate person who is easily exploited. Geography would no longer be destiny for children in poor places. Overall, in our more literate future, whether in poor parts of the world or among the disadvantaged in the USA, programs would be empirically driven, time sensitive, and much more transparent to multiple stakeholders. This has already happened in some places, some of the time. What we need to imagine today is that this future is within our view. We can see our way forward, and together, we need to make sure the road forward is clear, expected, and fought for in, turn in the competition for global and national resources. In sum, our achievements have not been small, even if we have a substantial way to go. This meeting, along with other efforts, will guide us more rapidly than ever before down the road toward a more literate world. And that is something to celebrate on this 2011 International Literacy Day. Thank you.